Okay, good morning, everyone. I think it's time to start. Yeah, uh, thanks for joining my talk about asynchronous PHP requests today. Um, I hope everyone has a good party yesterday. So everyone is a little bit late. Some words about me. Uh, my name is Holger. Uh, I'm working in a company from Germany called Fortune Globe. Uh, we are doing fashion e-commerce. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and on GitHub. Um, when I'm not working, I am organizing the PHP user group in Dresden. So, yeah, good morning. <coughs> So uh, if you are in the east of Germany, um, come by and visit one of our meetups. So let's talk about PHP and async. Um, it's kind of a love and hate relationship uh, with PHP and async. And uh, I want to show you why. Uh, for this talk, I chose a use case um, just to demonstrate um, yeah, where we face asynchronous requests and the use case is uh, a PDF creation service um, to keep things simple. Yeah, you can see uh, or you can imagine um, that you have a web service or something like that and you send a request to that web service and um, this web service creates some PDFs for you. So in that case, when you have only three PDFs, um, it's quite okay to do a sequential processing of these PDFs or creation of these PDFs. But what if you have to create a lot of more PDFs? Um, so that can be a little bit more difficult and sequential processing wouldn't help this way because it would take too long for a course. So that's why parallelism to the rescue. Um, you want to parallelize um, seven processes to create the PDFs. And in the next slides, I want to show what kind of parallelism we tried in the past years, um, or what I have seen in the last years. For example, we can do things like this. Um, yeah, just exec a command and send it to dev null and send it in the background. So, yeah, fire and forget on the shell. Um, for example, you can do that with exec, shell exec, or even proc open. Um, proc open is, for example, I think the method that uses um, symphony process, for example. Yeah, so that works, of course, but um, we have some problems here. Um, for example, the PHP script is called in the CLI mode. Uh, which is a completely different environment from my web environment. Um, when you have to pass a lot of commands or a lot of arguments to your script, um, that can be quite messy because you have a command that is really huge. Um, the whole data handling on the script that you are calling um, is based on argv, and it's yeah quite messy to handle with that because um, we are used to use post or get, um, uh, the global post or get array to access um, parameters. Um, we don't get any response back here because we just send it to the background and yeah, hope it will work. And debugging is a nightmare, um, especially when, when you want to try to debug that in production. What else did we try? We try, of course, curl. Um, since 2009, it is possible to add this option. Um, I can show it here. Uh, the curl timeout in milliseconds to one. Um, that will cause the curl to return immediately to your script and run the uh, call script in background. So that also works, of course, but um, again, several problems. We have a web server involved here always. Um, which is a little bit of overhead and, of course, a potential error source. We maybe load, uh, have a load balancer involved too, so another system. 
And we have at least two environments to maintain here. So we have the overhead of the um, web server or a local lens or two uh, that we have to maintain um, to run uh, this command. So of course we need the curl extension in PHP. And again, we don't get any response back because it's running in the background and we, yeah, it's fire and forget at this po point. And um, a security issue, uh, the call script must be exposed at least under the documents root of uh, the current domain. So um, that's maybe something we don't want either. Yeah. We tried even harder. Uh, we tried to set up a kind of queue uh, in a database. So we are inserting our script and its payload to a database table and um, establishing a cron tab, uh, which will run every minute uh, and check if the script needs to run and so on. Um, of course, that works too, but we have no on-demand execution here. Um, we need a lot of locking and logging. Um, it's quite um, easy to get race conditions here. Um, if you are not watching over your um, cron tab, you can have errors that pile up until the server is really shutting down. Um, you have a heavy database load for data that is not really important to be in the database. So, yeah, my hint, uh, that is really a bad idea. Um, it's like storing sessions in a database. Um, so we have maintenance outside of our PHP project. Uh, in this case, it's the cron tab. And that is very hard to test locally. If you have a local environment um, for, the, for your development, um, it's not that easy to set up a whole cron tab environment um, on your local machine. Especially, it's not easy to debug when you have uh, multiple cron jobs running at the same time, um, causing side effects. Um, yeah, that's really hard to test. And we also had tried to be clever. So we created a function, which is including a script. And then we register that function as a shutdown function. And after registering that, we do a redirect to some page, whatever, and do a flush. So um, that causes PHP to um, enter the shutdown mode or the, the shutdown sequence. And our function will be run in that shutdown sequence. That works, actually, but we also have some problems here. Um, again, we have a web server involved because we do a redirect. Um, we don't get any response, of course. Um, memory leaks are a potential issue here because when you are in the shutdown sequence, there is no memory limit anymore. Um, although the error handling is, yeah, uh, try to run uh, or try to throw an exception uh, in the shutdown function and have fun. Uh, we also have no time execution limit here, and that's why, please, don't try to be clever. Okay, what else can we use to um, do something of asynchronous uh, processing in PHP? Um, there are some extensions, for example, pthreads. Um, pthreads is for multi-threading in PHP and has some requirements. For example, you need to enable it, um, and you enable you need to enable the uh, ZTS, the Zend thre thre Thread Safety, um, and you need to do that before uh, or on build time when you uh, build your PHP. Um, so you cannot enable that afterwards. You need to do it um, when you build your PHP installation. Yeah, and uh, pthreads only runs on CLI. Um, not on a web environment. So again, we have some problems here. So we need a custom PHP build. Um, not all other extensions are thread safe. Um, it's not working in web environment. You need a basic knowledge about uh, multi-threading, um, which is a little bit, I would say, overheaded for simple asynchronous tasks. And the whole um, process and threat management is up to you. So you need to take care of that, and you need to handle that. 
Um, there's a little bit simpler solution. Um, it's called process control, uh, PCMTL. Um, again, there are some requirements for installation. Um, it's also a build flag you need to enable um, to get that ex uh, extension running in PHP. And this extension is not working on Windows, so it's only on Unix systems. So again, we need a custom PHP build. It's not working on Windows. We need basic knowledge about Unix processes. And again, the process management is up to you. And there's such a thing like Yemen. Yeah, Yemen uh, has a lot more requirements. So you need uh, three libraries at least. And you need a running Gearman server, so you have another piece of infrastructure. Um, so another piece of infrastructure plus a PHP extension. Gearman is really feature rich, um, but it's a little bit overloaded for uh, simple asynchronous tasks. Um, so it's more a job runner in the background um, when you have long running PHP processes. And when you want to develop locally, uh, it's quite hard to set up um, Gearman for local development, um, so it's not hard, but you have to do a lot of things um, to set up Gearman for local development. So let's summarize. What do we want? We want to do asynchronous calls, of course. We want eventually get their responses back. We want no additional infrastructure, no additional extensions. We want data handling like we are used to be uh, used to use in, uh, in our web environment. Uh, we want to take advantage of opcache um, because, as you probably know, when you're running the scripts on the CLI, there's no opcache active. Um, it's only active when you're running on a web environment. Yeah, and we want our background workers not to be exposed to the public, and we want a slightly tunable process management. Now, what if I told you there is already a bulletproof process manager ship with PHP, and you are probably already using it. Yeah, we are talking about PHP FPM. So um, FPM stands for Fast CGI Process Manager, and it's shipped with PHP, it's part of the PHP core, and um, you are uh, probably using it when you are using uh, web servers like Nginx or something else. Um, it's quite common to use PHP FPM as the PHP backend. Yeah, usually it works this way. You have a web server, Nginx or Apache, doesn't matter, and uh, that communicates or redirects the request to PHP FPM, and PHP FPM um, knows the concept of pools. So when standard, uh, standard installation of PHP uh, has a www pool, um, which handles one to n processes. So that is your PHP web context. So I think that should look familiar to everyone. Um, so this is the standard installation of PHP. Uh, you have a master process and three www pool, pools running. Um, yeah. So at that point, I was thinking, OK, um, we have a process manager in PHP. And how can we communicate with that process manager? to run our own commands uh, on that process manager. Um, so the PHP FPM implements the fast CGI protocol. And um, I was researching a little bit in, on GitHub or and on blog posts, and I found a, um, yeah, a presentation of Arne Blankertz uh, from 2014, where he introduced, um, or he tried to marry uh, Node.js and PHP together. And I saw a um, Node.js library directly communicating to PHP FPM. And I said, hey, when they can do that in JavaScript, why can't we do that in PHP? Uh, so I was searching for a library that can communicate with PHP FPM or can communicate over the fast CGI protocol. Uh, and I really found one. Um, it was a library from Pierre-Eric Charon. Um, which was not maintained any longer, so uh, it 
at least it seems like that. And um, it was based on PHP 5. Uh, yeah, and not really modern. It had, uh, was only built for single requests um, against the PHP FBM. So um, I tried to reach uh, Pierre and tried to ask if he can, or is, if it is still maintained and if he can add some features. Um, but he did never respond. So um, what are you doing as a developer? You are doing your own project. Um, so I implemented a, a fast CGI client. Um, you can find it on GitHub. It's under MIT license, so it's open source, um, and you can use it. Um, I have two um, release branches. One is uh, for PHP 7.0 uh, and upwards, and one is for PHP 7.1 and upwards. So now, how does that work? Um, PHP FVM allows us to add more than one pool. Um, so I just added a pool called background. And I set it up that it has, uh, can run 0 to n processes. And what we are doing then is when we get our web requests, which will end up in uh, the www pool, um, I just sent another request to PHP FBM via my client. And that request will end up in the background pool uh, where I can run my processes. So it's a separation of these pools because when you run your background processes uh, on the www pool too, uh, you maybe have the problem that you harm your web environment and um, yeah, your server load is not uh, the best at the time. So, um, so you can also accept, uh, or still accept, a lot of web requests, and uh, these web requests can delegate their background processes to another pool. And you also have the advantage that you can um, yeah, tune that pool uh, for background processing uh, instead of um, yeah, using your www pool for web requests, um, which is tuned for web requests, uh, which is a completely different requirement. Yeah, so how does such a pool config looks like? Um, so this is the background pool. Um, usually it's quite the same um, as the www pool. So you have a user and a group, which, is, um, which has the ownership of the process, and you are listening to a socket. Um, you can either listen to a Unix domain socket or to a network socket. Um, you can tell it which users can access that socket, and you can decide which process management type you want to use. Um, PHP FBM knows three process management types. Um, it's dynamic, which is the default type when you install PHP. Um, dynamic means you have, uh, like we have seen before, one master process and several sub-process already running. Um, and they are always running uh, and waiting for requests. Um, I use for my background processes uh, the type on demand, which means um, it will only start new processes when, I, when it gets requests uh, and will don't have uh, any idle processes um, yeah, that will always run. Um, then you can define how many processes it will or it can, um, can start. Um, the max children means um, I can have 100 processes at the same time. And at the end, you can define <coughs> uh, after which time uh, such a child process will die um, when it went idle. So uh, for example, 10 seconds is a good, um, good idea. Yeah, so now how do we use that uh, new pool to connect to um, the PHP FBM? So um, I will show a little of code um, in the next slide, so um, I try to explain it. Yeah, so that is basically uh, how you connect to it uh, with my client implementation. So I have a class Unix domain socket. Um, you are entering the path, and you have two timeout settings um, for read and write and for connection. And um, with that connection, you can instantiate the client. Um, the same thing uh, works for network sockets. Uh, so on a network socket, you have an IP and or a host name and a port. Uh, port 9000 is uh, the default port of PHP FBM, so you have to use another port for uh, your own 
um, pool configuration um, that would look like this. So it's basically the same uh, like for the Unix domain socket, but instead of listening to a file, we are listening to a yeah, network port. Okay, um, I need to drink something. Now let's send some requests. Um, first, we can send a synchronous request. That means it would be the same if we uh, do a curl request and would wait for the response. Um, but we don't need a web server here, so we just send the request to PHP FBM. And uh, for example, in this case, we use a script called create PDF. And we can send a lot of key values uh, like we're used to uh, with post or get or push or pet or delete. Um, so I try to simulate the HTTP verbs by using classes that are um, uh, named like the HTTP verbs for post request, get request, and so on. So on the script that you are calling, uh, it behaves the same like you would get a post request in this case. So yeah, then you send the requests, and um, when the request is done, you get a response back. The response is an object, and from that object, you can fetch, for example, the body. The response has an interface. It looks like this. Um, so you can get the request ID back. You can get uh, all the headers back that you are you were sending in your script. Um, you can get single headers. You can get the body. You can get the raw response that is the complete text, including headers. And you can get the duration. And the duration is the time between sending the request and getting the response back. Yeah. Um, like I said, same works with the network socket. Um, we can send a post request, and that is our first asynchronous request, um, which behaves like all the other examples I showed before. Um, it's just fire and forget. So we send a request, um, we get a request ID back, and that's it. So we don't handle any responses here. So, sorry? Request ID is a 16-bit integer. Um, that's a requirement of the FastCGI protocol. Every request you send via FastCGI protocol needs to have a 16-bit integer um, request ID. And that is what you are getting back here. So you run something on the client, right? Sorry? You pick one on the client, right? Yeah, the client will automatically generate it for you. Yeah, so and now that we have sent a request, we also want to wait for a response or get the response back. Um, the simple case is you send the request and you read the response for that particular request ID. And of course, in that case, um, when you call the, the method uh, read request here, uh, read response, um, from that point on, it is blocking until you get the response. <coughs> so you can do something in the meanwhile which is very good because you can have um, set your request to something else and at the end of your script can read the response back. Um, I also added um, response callbacks and failure callbacks um, so that you uh, can define callbacks which will provide you the response as soon as it uh, comes back from the call script. And if, uh, if there was a failure or anything, um, you have also a failure callback. Um, you can add multiple callbacks, so this is a very, uh, both are very idiotic functions, um, so you can add multiple callbacks, um, which will get the response. Um, yeah, and recently I also added a pass-through callback, uh, which is very handy when you have a script that produces output constantly, uh, and you want to see that output in real time. So um, if you're calling a a background script, um, for example, a cron job or something like that, um, that produces uh, a lot of output. Um, you will get that output as a buffer here uh, in your pass through callback, and you can do something with it, logging or um, putting it to the front end of your website. Yeah, um, when you send a request, we also um, added loop integration. Um, for example, we have 
a inner loop and a outer loop integration. Um, the inner loop integration means that um, the client will completely handle um, this waiting for the response and uh, looking if there is a response and so on. Um, but you can also do that if you have a, an outer loop already. Um, if you are using uh, event loop libraries like React PHP or something like that, um, yeah, you can ask the client if there is a response for that request ID. And if, if so, then handle the response. Okay. Um, all I've shown until now is about um, single requests. Um, and that was a limitation of that old client. Um, we want to have multiple requests. So that would look like this. Um, so we would just send a lot of requests, uh, put their request IDs on an array, for example, and we can do something else after that. And at the end, we can read all the responses um, of that particular request IDs. Um, there's one problem with that approach, uh, or with that um, kind of doing it, because you will get the responses in the same order as you get uh, as you send the requests. So, no matter how long your um, background workers or single background workers are uh, taking time, um, you will always get the same um, same order of your requests uh, for your responses. So that's maybe not what you want because you want um, the re responses back as, as soon as they are uh, ready. So what we can do instead is, um, again, send a lot of requests and yeah, just give me all the re responses that are ready and then print out the body. Um, there are several ways to do so. Um, it's again, an inner and an outer loop. Um, implementation here. Uh, so the same thing is here. We can loop over um, until we have no handled, unhandled responses anymore. Um, I can fetch all the re request IDs that are having responses, can loop over the responses and can read the response. And the result, <coughs> result would look like this. Um, so now we have response two, which was the fastest, uh, response three and response one uh, in this case was the slowest one. So in this case, we are ordered by response time. And that's maybe what we want. Yeah, um, like I said, there's or again an inner and an outer loop um, implementation. So you can just say, wait for all the responses and um, your response callbacks will be called as soon as the response is there. Um, and you can also do that on your own. Um, yeah, with some loops. Now I have a quick demo. I hope it's working. Uh, okay, the screen is crazy. So what you're seeing on the uh, right side is um, the list of the background processes. So, and on the left side, you will see some output. So a single PDF creation will take two seconds and we have one worker, uh, one background process that is killed after one second. So now I will create 100 PDFs in, uh, in order. So you see, um, all the numbers are ordered uh, from 0 to 99. And it takes a little while because uh, he really waits until the next number has created. And um, yeah, to give that a little bit uh, demo, I put a random sleep into each uh, of the processes. So, and as you can see, the background processes are uh, going away after they went idle. So that was the setting of that idle timeout. And now let's have a look at the reactive variant. So uh, again, a lot of processes are spawning. And as you can see, the numbers are not ordered anymore. So um, you will get the responses back as soon as you do it. Yeah. And wood, wood. It's running. Okay. Um, 
That's about it. Any questions? Thank you. Yeah. Um, actually, actually, inside uh, the client, there is a stream select function. Um, so I'm working with stream select, and that has a timeout of 200,000 milliseconds. So um, no, I'm not using the whole CPU. <laughs> yeah, so th that is considered. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, um, so PHP FPM also, you have seen um, when I started 100 requests, uh, it is not spawning 100 processes. So it will, uh, for example, uh, open three, 30 processes, and um, the rest will be queued in PHP FPM. So it will be buffered, and uh, as soon as the process is, has finished, it will be reused by the next uh, queued process. And, uh, you also have the usual output buffering in PHP um, when the responses are coming back. And the queue limit is depending on your operation system um, and on your, the type of the uh, socket you are using. So uh, if you are using um, the Unix domain socket, uh, you have a file descriptor limit. And if you are using the network socket, there's another limit. Uh, I don't know the number actually at the moment, but um, it's about 511 or something like that uh, of processes that you can send to PHP FPM uh, until he will say, sorry, I can't get, uh, cannot um, receive any more processes. Does that answer your question? Yeah? Yeah? Sorry, I didn't get it. No, the request ID is not incremental, it's a random integer. Uh, yep. Uh, in the case, uh, PDF, uh, yeah, um, that is maybe a good question. Uh, when you are using, let me show you. Um, yeah. Um, the file that we are given here to the post request, uh, it must be an absolute path to the file on your local or on your file system. So PHP FPM doesn't know anything about document routes or something. Um, so you cannot use any uh, relative path or a path with dot dot in it. Um, it needs to be an absolute path to your script that you are calling. So that is what usually the web server does for you when you define a document route and you are calling a script behind that document route, he is providing the absolute path to PHP FPM. So, uh, and that's the, re the reason why you can put your script not under the document route, you can put it anywhere else. So. Any more questions? Yeah. Sorry, it's, it's uh, too quiet. I, uh, I can hear it. <laughs> How to handle it? You, you mean the payload that I sent to request? OK, it's, uh, it's that, that line here, for example. Uh, Usually, PHP, um, so what, what you are sending here as a content um, is actually the HTTP body. Um, PHP knows uh, when you build a, an HTTP query, PHP um, automatically uh, makes an array out of it. So 
Uh, but you can also send XML or something like that, and you can just get get it via PHP input, for example, um, to read the to read the body, um, to read the raw body. Uh, so it doesn't matter what kind of um, uh, payload you are sending. Um, that is the usual way to get a post or get array on the other side. So, yeah. Uh, at the moment, I am the only contributor to that. Um, you're welcome to join me. So, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, at the moment, there are no open issues or feature requests. Um, you're welcome to do so. Um, yeah, but I will maintain that in the future. So, <coughs> yeah. Um, so the client takes care of collisions. Um, he checks if, so he knows all the request IDs that are already used, and he tries to not use the same. That's no problem. Um, actually, I don't know really why there must be a request ID because it's it has no meaning. So it's just for you to. Uh, when you are in, in, in one PHP session, uh, you have kind of uh, unique request IDs to, to handle them. Um, I think on the PHP FPM side, it's completely irrelevant. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much.